Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel Houseplanty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today's video came off the back of a chat that I was having with an awesome subscriber slash follower on Instagram as well, and he mentioned something that I've been thinking about doing for a while, which is kind of a do some planty chores with me whilst we chat, slash repot kind of situation, we'll see how it goes. I'll start it off by saying that I tried doing one of these in the past, <laughs> the tricky thing with this is I tend to film on the weekend. So on the weekend as well tends to be my heavier watering days. I think the mistake I did is I tried to do that in the summer where my watering schedule between the plants in the conservatory, in the house, the garden, and the allotment <laughs> is a bit much. I think in the summer Generally speaking, I will be watering solidly for about three, three and a half hours every morning. <laughs> Before you ask, I get up at stupid o'clock in the summer, I don't know why. But um, the thing that I found when I did that video is it was great. I was chatting and we were kind of uh, answering some of your questions and things like that. But by the end of it, I kind of got to the, it just went, I, I spent all that time filming and I've done one thing out of everything that I was meant to do. So. The, the chores that I had to do took twice as long. But you know what? Neither here nor there. Let's try this one more time. And I thought this time around, I'll talk you through doing some of my checks around here. We can chat. I can tell you, uh, I can answer a few questions that have come up both about certain plants, certain conversations I've had with people. And some people want to know a bit more about me and I'll share what I am comfortable sharing online. <laughs> So yeah, so let, let's basically dive into it. One of the things that I wanted to show to begin with, and I'm trying to see if I can pull it off, that's going to be relatively easy. Let's, let's talk about something that's been struggling for a while, which is I chopped back my, and I don't think a lot of people, if people kind of look at my videos or look at other people that do videos like this and th think that all of our plants look spectacular and nothing ever goes wrong. <laughs> I'm here to burst the bubble and say things go wrong to us all the time as well. It's fine. <laughs> but uh, one of these things is, and I'll bring it up a bit closer so you might be able to see, hopefully it will focus. There we go. So this is two cuttings that I took from a white princess that is behind me there. I don't know whether or not you're going to see it. Some of these leaves are a bit more green. I found with my white princess that when I take cuttings from it, it tends to almost seem like it's reverted back to the green form for the next couple of leaves and then it starts pushing out fully green leaves again. So maybe that's just been my experience. But it's interesting because you can see some of it's growing there at the very bottom and there as well. But and you can see the variegation is still there. Like if I really wanted to, and this does pan out the way that I'm hoping it will, eventually I'll have a few more uh, white princesses. And I'll bring another one to show you. Sorry, I'm going to be going in and out of screen all the time because I'm going to have to move around for this video. So this is another experiment, another one that was struggling, and you can kind of see the leaf. And I took off, I cut off the white variegated section to give it as much of a chance as I possibly could to survive, and this is in a net pot with my arrowed soil mix. This is in pond. Both of these struggled. Was I giving it probably enough light? Probably not. Was I slightly drowning both of them? Probably. So I've really pulled back on watering on some of these. I've refreshed the media for this, and since doing that, I'm actually starting to see a lot more growth. This sort of almost turned into just two sticks at some point. So here's to hoping that these will do a bit better. And yeah, so here's another example, and a lot of people were asking about this. This is the Alocasia aslanii, and you can see the stunning leaves there. I don't know whether or not I'm just going to come up on camera, but I'll bring it in a bit closer, and you might be able to see if I move my head behind it. You can see some spider mite damage because Alocasias. And this is one of the examples of plants that I've said, and I know a lot of people have come back in comments and said, oh no, you can do it, of Alocasias that I'm growing in pond, and it's still not loving its life too much. So this one is doing better than most, but mm, I don't know. I mean, we'll see how it goes, but jury's still out on that one. But, but yeah, this is one of the things that I'll do on the weekend because I've got time and I'd be really curious to see, does anybody else do this where you kind of do your functional 
kind of care during the weekdays because obviously you've got other things going on during the weekdays. And on the weekend, when you've got a bit more time, you tend to indulge a bit more in the hobby, as in you'll spend a bit longer and you'll do things like going around and checking some of the stuff that is struggling, seeing if what you've tried to do is working. If not, do you then kind of reevaluate? This is the time <laughs> when I check for pests and where is it? As with most people, I think these are all my spray bottles for pests. And I think, I'm trying to remember now. So this is something that I have to deal with fungicide because I do get, even though I've got so many fans going in here, because the humidity levels are as high, <laughs> as, as, high as they can be in here, uh, I tend to get some uh, mold or mildew. Normally this would be the day as well that I would get um, kind of a bathroom cleaner with a, something that would kill mold essentially and wipe down kind of walls and things that might have some stuff growing on it. But this is specifically for plants, so it's easy for me to kind of spray around when, as and when it's needed. This is my neem oil solution, and this is not Provanto. This is another one that I'm using, and I'll put it up at the top there, because nothing I found worked well with mealybugs. This seems to. So it's still a systemic. So this one will kill mealybugs on impact. And as long as you do it a couple of weeks later, and I find two or three applications of this, and mealybugs are slowly disappearing from my collections. The other thing, <laughs> the other thing I will say, and I'm trying to think if I can easily bring an example to show you. Let me see if I can grab something to show you. And ironies of ironies, I cannot find it right now. But I'll show you an example. I've I've treated it, so which is good. I'm, I'm happy with this. These types of plant eyes, the Velcro-y ones, top tip from me, and I don't know why I didn't think about this, when you're spraying down something like a Hoya, <laughs> somebody left a comment which I thought was spectacular, just like, do you really own a Hoya collection if you're not constantly like dealing with mealybugs? No, is the answer to that. <laughs> At least from my experience. There's a few... Hoyas that I've got that don't have mealybugs, so... Mm. Do yours have loads of mealybugs or is it just a couple of us that are struggling with this? But one of the things that I've discovered is these Velcro plant ties, which a lot of people are using, you might spray down a plant, but very few people remove these. And I found, I've started removing these and they are a lot of the times covered with mealybugs. So you're just like, I've treated that. Why do they keep coming back? Because they're all living underneath this. So take these off, spray these down, re-stick them on, Thank me later, hopefully. The other thing that I wanted to share with you, and hopefully I'll be able to insert some clips here, is recently I got a very cool, you know, those kind of microscope things that you can attach to your phone or like with the little light thing. And again, I'll see if I can put a picture here. I'm not describing these things well, I'm so sorry. But I was able to take some close-ups and I'll insert some here of things like mealy bugs, what I want to do is eventually, and let me know if you like the idea of this for a video, is I want to do a full video, and I know some people have done things like this, I want to do a full video of looking at things under the microscope, things like bugs. It's annoying because I didn't have that many thrips. <laughs> it's annoying. <laughs> uh, don't, don't, don't come for me at the comments. Uh, this isn't, this, is, this wasn't meant as a humble brag, but I didn't get any real threat pressures this summer, which I am eternally grateful for. So I think I was able to grab a, a kind of video of a thrip, a dead thrip and maybe some eggs, so I'll insert it here. But I wanna do maybe a video where I kind of look at things more under the microscope. So what variegation looks like under a microscope, what blister variegation, so the silvery variegation some of the times looks under a microscope. The, the variegation on the stems, I wanna look at things like the components of PON or semi-hydro mixes under the microscope. So we can truly start to see what's happening on a deeper level with some of these plants to kind of understand a bit more about why they do certain things that they do and some media, what they do, how they do certain things that they do and bugs as well to a certain point. So let me know if you're interested and I'll share a bit of information with you now that people have asked kind of what my scientific background is. So throughout school, I was, I used to love sciences. I've mentioned this before. I was also that weird kid 
that my parents would lose me because I'd go and be picking flowers or looking at plants. I, I've always been slightly weird when it comes to plants. Can you tell? <laughs> uh, I just get to enjoy this now because I'm realizing that I'm, and I think this might be true for a lot of us, we realize that we're not the only freak in the bunch. If that makes sense. And I mean that in the nicest possible way. Like there's more people like me and you and everybody else that's kind of into these things. So it's really, really cool to find that kind of community. But yeah, so my kind of, I, I fell really easily into the sciences. I was planning to go in to do medicine. And ironically enough, I was, I want, I knew very clearly that I wanted to specialize in plastic surgery. And I've had similar conversations with some followers with this and they were really surprised. My first degree was uh, in human biology, which essentially was just a human anatomy degree. So yes, I was the weirdo that spent hours with <laughs> in dissection rooms doing anatomical things, if that makes sense. I don't know what I can and can't say on YouTube, but it was very, very interesting. And we, we did a lot more anatomy than even the medics would do as well. So that was exceptionally interesting. So that's where the scientific background it is. And if anybody's wondering, my second degree was something completely unrelated. I did tourism and business. Yeah, tourism and business, essentially. So uh, it makes sense in my head. Those were my two big passions. So, and the reason why I didn't continue down the route of kind of medicine and down that route is because living as a poor student for one degree, and I, I then had the realization of, like, I'm going to have another 15 years of living like this. And for me, that wasn't something I was comfortable with. So I didn't follow down that route. Do I regret doing it? Absolutely not. It was great, great fun. Should I maybe studied a bit more in the first one and not been the typical 18 year old? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, life lessons. <laughs> but that might give you a bit more of an indication as to why I tend to look at things and I, I, I want readings and I want numbers and that's the way that I understand. So that's why <laughs> the hate that I get for this on a regular basis. My moisture meter using my plant care app, it keeps things nice and structured for me. It gives me data that I can go off. I was never the math geek, but I wasn't far off it, I don't think. So that kind of leans into that essentially. But Let's look at a few other things that I would normally do. Actually, I can give you a bit of an update. So I have been rehabbing the plants that I got from Equigenera. So let's have a look at a couple of them. So in my video, I was saying that I was gonna just pop them in some water for a couple of days to see if they could perk back up. This is a Monstera Oblica Peru, and it is looking a spectacular. These things are all gonna get repotted today. This that I wasn't too sure because it had its scientific name instead of what everybody else has been calling it is, it turns out, the El Chaco Red. So I will be potting both of these two things up, including a lot of the other plants that came in that order. I wanted to do this for this video, but then I realized Hon is really tricky for me to film in this space because I'll talk you through what I would normally do when I'm repotting with Hon. And if I can, after this video, when I will be repotting these, I'll take some clips and maybe insert them here. So normally I would take the pond and put it in whatever vessel I'm gonna be using. I would then rinse out the pond or the semi-hydro mix because the one I'm gonna be using for these is the ones that I got from Soil Ninja. So I'll rinse it out, make sure that as much of that kind of dust has come off. Then I'll pop the plant in at a decent level of depth, basically. Then put the other semi-hydro on top, the other media, basically the other gravel on top, and then rinse the whole thing through, and then it's done. But that is very loud and kind of tricky to kind of film and I would probably end up filming one of those and it would be a whole video and you probably don't need to see that. So I'll see if I can insert some clips here and there and you can see what's, how I'm doing with that basically. But let me give you another kind of little thing of what I do when I come in. So this might just be me, but I'll come in first thing in the morning, I will switch on my dehumidifier <laughs> for the people that have been here for the plant tour they know why. So I'll switch on my dehumidifier. I'll switch on, currently I'm retesting heat mats 
with a thermostat for my anthurium seedlings. There's a lot of people that got some of my seedlings last year that they're kind of showing pictures now and they're, they're kind of halfway to being the full size of my mother plants. And I'm looking at my seedlings and I'm just like, it feels like you've stopped in time and nothing is happening. None of them are struggling, but not an awful lot is happening. So I thought, you know what, let's try it because I know when I had seedlings with the VTI, for instance, it was a seedling and it was on a heat mat for the first year of its life and then it grew and grew and grew and got much bigger. And I know some people that got those seedlings originally when Carl from Turner Tropical got it, some people had success with them, but a lot of people didn't. That's kind of, I think, what I did different to a lot of people. I have done a review on the VCI and I'll put it up the top there and it is the specific one that I started off as uh, a seedling. So I'll do that, I'll switch on the humidifier, I'll switch on the heat mats. I'm weird because I want to switch on the heat mats. Um, I switch them off every night. I'm a bit uncomfortable leaving them on overnight. I know I'm probably supposed to, but they're not particularly expensive heat mats. I got them from Amazon. Yeah, I don't, I don't trust the quality. You might not burn down the house. So I switch them off and I, or only, they're only on when I'm in the house, basically. So there is that. Then I'll switch on all the different fans in here and counting one, two, three, <laughs> four. There's only four fans going at the moment, but what you won't be able to see is right behind you, they've got two big like standing fans that kind of oscillate and do most of the room basically above and below and everything else. One thing I will show you, and this did come up with uh, a few people that I was talking to, they were, they were dealing with mildew on the leaves and they were saying, oh, I've got the fan going on for about an hour or two each day, but I'm still struggling with it. Let me show you. So this is, and I'm trying to remember, I always forget this philodendron's name and I'll put it up the top there, but it is, it started off as a two leaf cutting and it is quite large at this point in time, but I'll see if I can bring it in so you might be able to see some of the damage that has happened from the mildew. Um, this one might be more kind of apparent when you see it, there you go. So I do need to wipe down these leaves. This is one of the things that I would do on my weekend. And this is in front of the fans that are running from the moment that I wake up until the moment that I will go to bed. And I'm still getting this with the humidity levels in here. So an hour probably isn't gonna do very much. It, it, there needs to be as constant air movement as you possibly can because, and let's kind of talk about that a bit. Think about these plants in nature. Stand outside for any period of time, winter, summer, whenever. Very rarely do you get hours or even days where there is stillness of absolutely no air movement. These plants need air circulation as much as possible around them. I'm not talking about gale force winds. I'm not saying put a plant directly in front of your fan, but it does help. And it, I found as well that it does help negate some of the pest pressures as well. So if you've got that fan constantly moving, it's harder for some of these pests to attach. Yes, the people that have been <laughs> know about my mealybug issue. They, they don't seem to be affected by the wind as much. But everything else, generally since I've had better airflow around my space, I've not really experienced too many pest pressures. But the other thing as well that I'll kind of do on days like today is I'll go around and have a look at yellowing leaves or browning leaves and I'll start picking them off because, and again, this is more, less for aesthetics for me because I didn't mind. I'm just like, mm, grow how you want to grow. I found that a lot of the pests are now living on the yellowing or dying or the brown leaves for a lot of my plants. So I'm just like, let's deal with that first before anything else. So yeah, so I'll set up all my space. I'll do the checks that I'm talking about now, and then I'll start my watering. And what I do for my watering is as follows. So I've got a large watering can that I think is five liters. And this is a small one that's always in here. What I will normally do with the five liter watering can, I'll go around and water some of my bigger plants. So the people that have been here for a while will know my philodendron burly marks variegated 
is almost the size of a small tree. My Alocasia gagiana variegata, which is right behind me, is almost the size of a small tree. Those I will go and water directly with the red watering can, which is a five liter watering can, because I need to use a lot more of that. I will also then use, and I mentioned this on one of my other videos, a siphon to suck up all the water that drips into the drip trays back into that watering can. I will time that because at that point, if it's been through the soil, I don't want to be passing pathogens between plants. And at that point, I will probably be discarding of that water. What I probably will do instead of putting it down the sink, especially in the summer, is I'll go and water something in the garden with it, basically. Because yes, I know I'm potentially introducing a pathogen into the garden, but that's a bit more of a wild scenario because it's in the ground. I'm more confident that it won't cause as much of an issue that, than if I put it into the soil of my plants here, basically within the pots, because there's not very much for it to go if the, the biome of the soil of some of these plants isn't that great and I introduce something that could cause it harm, it's a lot harder for it to struggle to come back from, basically. But yeah, then what I will do is I'll fill from the big watering can. I might be weird with this one, but this is how I do it. I fill the big watering can, the small watering can, and it's easy because I can get into nooks and crannies for some of my smaller plants and do it that way. What I'll also do is, obviously I've talked about my plant care app loads of times and best money I've ever spent, and it's obviously not sponsored or advertised. It's, yeah, I've been using it for coming up to five years now, so. Um, it is something that will also remind me when I need to do flushes, especially with semi-hydro. So at that point, I will take that entire pot, if I can, to the sink, flush it with running water and let the tap go for a bit to flush out anything else, pop it back on. That time, it will not be getting any fertilizer until the next time, basically, just because I need to flush out that growing media. The other thing that I do, and I don't know whether or not a lot of people do, this little watering can has always got a liter of water just sitting on the table that I have in my conservatory because I might come in at the end of the night when I need to switch up everything before I go to bed, grow lights, things like that. That's another thing that I switch on in the beginning is grow lights. I want to have some water available so I don't have to go keep going backwards and forwards to the kitchen so I can just do some spot waterings if I've missed anything. It's mainly going to be things like heat mats because heat mats will dry out things really quickly so I always double check what the plants are doing and their media is doing that have been sitting on a heat mat all day and see if they need to top up because that's the other thing with that people don't always realize with heat mats is you do need to baby those plants a bit especially if they're they're not just starting off from like um, a seed so really useful. The other thing that I wanted to kind of chat with you about is some ideas for some new videos or possibly new series that are going to be coming out. So obviously we had some good responses on the collab video that I did with Tanya on the Equigenera EU import haul kind of unboxing kind of thing. I've mentioned this before, it's, you don't have to, if you want to take part in something like that, we can have that discussion. It doesn't need to be an import. You can just show your plants. I am not one to want to get anybody to spend money if you don't, if you just want to show the plants you've already got. I've been doing mainly that. I've not been buying any real plants. I don't call it a plant ban because I'm really bad when somebody tells me not to do something, I will just do it anyway. So even if it's myself telling me that I shouldn't be buying any more plants. So it just happened naturally that I'm kind of taking moments over the last couple of years and just enjoying the plants that I've got. Also, I haven't got a lot of space and I'm kind of leaning into that probably more than I could make space, but I'm kind of leaning into that a bit more just because I don't need to be adding any more in really. But yeah, we could always kind of have a chat about it from your collection. You can tell me and the audience as to maybe why you like a plant, what your experiences have been with it, anything else that you want to share. So that is one that is probably going to be happening. To clarify to a lot of people, they were a bit worried that some of these more educational type videos or the review series would stop. It probably wouldn't. It might just alternate. I'm kind of getting in this again, tell me your thoughts. I'm getting to the point now where the slightly more difficult and uncommon plants, I'm kind of running out of ones to show you for the review series. And it is a case where, tell me if you want me to do it on some of the more common plants as well. Because my, my theory behind 
the plant review series is, especially for these plants that might have a slightly higher price point, you would probably be doing a bit more research before you get them and looking for things like these reviews so that you know what you're getting into. I don't know whether or not a lot of people would do that with the slightly more common plants, but maybe I'm wrong. Let me know. The other thing that I want to do, and it's probably going to happen quite soon after this video, so maybe probably a bit more of a heads up rather than anything else, is I want to talk about some of the creators that I like. Not necessarily the big, big names that have been around for a while, we all know and love them, but some of the emerging ones in kind of an, an effort to kind of showcase them to my audience and kind of say, look, some of these people are doing really cool. Two or three of them are actually already subscribers to this channel and take part in a lot of conversations and I love them to bits and their kind of emerging YouTube channels are fantastic. I even met one of them in person at the last plant swap that I went to as well. So I think it's nice kind of uplifting a bit more of the community and kind of showing showing them and their kind of content to my audience, I think would be kind of cool. Hopefully you all enjoy that as well. I need to reach out to a couple of other ones now and see if they'd be okay with me kind of showcasing their content. And, um, but again, if that's something that's of interest to people, I'm more than happy to do that as a bit of a, as and when series basically, so it will come up. So yes, the plant review series will start, the educational things will start, will kind of continue, sorry, the plant reviews will continue and the educational videos will continue as well. It's just, there might be a bit of a different mix. The review videos will probably almost always stay on that Tuesday kind of push live. The Thursday video, which tends to be a bit more informational one, will probably be the thing that will alternate quite a bit. The thing as well, and this is a bit more of the personal aspects that maybe a lot of people don't realize is, what I do for a living. So I do web design and digital marketing. So on top of filming, on top of editing, which, wow, I didn't realize, the more I'm kind of bringing out, what I'm hoping is better quality videos, the more time it is to edit. I remember in the very beginning, my videos weren't great, but at the same time, it used to take me however long it took me to film, maybe half an hour to an hour, and then an hour or two of editing maybe, and I could do it on my phone, and I could do it whilst watching the TV. The filming part is predominantly the same amount of time now, but the editing can take anywhere from four hours to eight hours. That's on top of me running my own web design and digital marketing agency five days of the week, basically, with all of my clients that I've got on there. So if I'm looking a bit haggard on some of these videos because I'm filming on a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning, it's because I probably need more sleep. The Puppy, so Duke, for the people that have been here for a while, is doing a lot better, but he's still not sleeping solidly throughout the night. So there is at least one or two wake-ups in the middle of the night to take him out to do his business. But he is growing up and he's doing really well for people that have been asking. Uh, there's a, a lot of training that is happening at the moment. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm looking a bit haggard. <laughs> you know why. But yeah, so that's kind of the reality of this and how my filming schedule works. I have tried, and you might see sometimes that I'm not fully aware of when videos might be coming out. It got a bit crazy at some point because I'd be filming on the weekend, I'd be editing all day on the Monday to be able to announce the video on the Monday afternoon to then bring out the video for Tuesday. That was getting a bit ridiculous. Same thing was going for the Thursday's video. So I've been able to get a week ahead of myself now. And that has given me so much more peace of mind because I can fit the editing around things that might change throughout my weekday, especially my working weekday. So that's why a lot of the times things like what I'm filming now, this video, isn't coming out next week. It's coming out in two weeks time as well. So it just gives me a bit of breathing space. So bear that in mind. When, when I say I'm gonna film something that you might've asked for, that's, that's why it might take a bit longer is because I'm, I'm a bit ahead essentially and I need that for my own <laughs> sanity. But yeah, I think I've prattled on. I don't know if this is a video that you all enjoyed. This is a bit of a risk for me because yes, I'll probably insert some clips here and there and I know this was meant to be a repot with me. I don't think it really was or kind of a, maybe a planty chat, maybe a planty chat. Hopefully the comments will be good with this one and we'll all have that conversation down below. But yeah, 
Hopefully you've enjoyed, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I shall see you here soon and I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.